Currently, in our project, the cart is in the template of our product component, but it doesn't make sense for each product to have its own cart. Instead, we can move the cart into a more global position, so each product can add to the same cart. So we can take this code here and move it up into the div with the ID of app. Then we'll need to move the cart data from the product component and put it into the data of our view instance. Great, now our app is starting to be structured in a more functional way. But when we click on the Add to Cart button, it no longer increments our cart because our cart is no longer on this product component. So how can we refactor our app so we can increment the cart from within our product component? In lesson 8, we learned how to pass data down into our component via props. But if something happens in our component, such as a button click, we need a way to let our parent know that event happened. We can't say this.cart if the cart is not on this component, so how can we increment the cart's total from inside our product component? Well, we can let our parent know the button was clicked by emitting an event with this dollar sign emit and then passing in a name for the event. We'll call the event add to cart since this is the name of the event associated with clicking the add to cart button. Now our button has the power to emit this event, but there's nowhere that is able to receive this emission. So let's add the ability to listen for that event on our product component by adding the shorthand for v on and the name of the event we are listening for, add to cart. Now when the add to cart button is pressed, it emits a signal that is received by an event handler on the product component. This then triggers the update cart method on the view instance, which increments the cart. We haven't yet written this method, but we will in just a moment. Now let's apply what we just learned to our application. This method on our product component will no longer work because our cart is no longer on this component. But I'm going to copy it because we'll use it later. Now we'll replace it with this dot dollar sign emit and pass in the name of the event. Again, we're calling it add to cart. And we'll listen for that event on the product component up here. So when that event happens, we can trigger the update cart method, which we'll add now. So let's scroll down to our view instance and add that method. And here in the body, I'm just going to paste exactly what was in the add to cart method of our product component. This dot cart plus equals one. Now this dot cart refers to this cart in our view instances data. When we refresh, we can see it's working. Cart is being incremented. Let's open up the view dev tools. If we click on the root of our app, we can see the cart data and it is indeed being incremented. But this isn't very realistic. In a real app, we'd want to know exactly what was just added to the cart. So instead of cart being a number, let's make it an array. That way we can push items into it. And if we push the ID of the product into the cart, then we'll be able to identify exactly which product was just added. So we'll pass ID into the update cart method, which means we need to send up that ID value when we emit the add to cart event. So we can add that as a second parameter here. And just like how we targeted the variant image earlier, we can use very similar code to target the variant ID, like so. Now our variant ID is being passed into the update cart method, which pushes it into the cart. When we refresh and click on the add to cart button, we can see the ID is successfully being added to the cart. But we don't need to display these IDs on the page. Instead, we can just display the length of the cart array by adding dot length here. Awesome! Now our product component is able to add a specific product ID into its parent's cart. For this lesson's challenge, add a button that removes the product from the cart array by emitting an event with the ID of the product to be removed. A link to the code playground is below. Congratulations, we've covered a lot throughout this course. If you want to learn how to add tabs and forms to your app, head on over to viewmastery.com to access those free additional lessons. Plus, we've got more courses over there for you, and we release a new view video every week to help you stay at the top of your game as a view developer. See you over there.